very plain in his epistles to the believers to make that clear. He was always very careful to say, I'm a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because people would be looking at him and saying, you're a prisoner uh, uh, because of, of religion. You're a prisoner because of uh, politics. You're a prisoner. You're a political prisoner. You're a religious prisoner. And Paul would say, no, no, my friend, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. In other words, no man can give, put me in chains without God's allowing it. Did Paul know about that? Do you remember Philippi when he's in jail and man has put him in chains and they've beaten him and God released him from prison? and gave him the opportunity to preach the gospel to uh, the, the jail keeper there at Philippi. You couldn't keep Paul a prisoner. And so he's pointing this out, even as he's in Rome, he's understanding and realizing. And I think that it's really neat that while Paul is at Rome, he's got his own soldier. Here he is, he's allowed to have his own house. Matter of fact, if you look at the end of the chapter in verse 30, it says, Paul dwelt two years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him. And so here is a soldier who the Bible says uh, kept Paul, but the reality is that this is a house that Paul has hired, and a soldier lives with him, and so really he's keeping a soldier. And so here Paul is with his own private personal protection. What uh, person who wants to persecute Paul is going to break in that house and mess with him? And God has given him grace with the centurion who has set him up in this situation, I would, uh, I would guess, speculate, I have no idea about this really, but I think it's entirely possible that the soldier would have been one of those individuals who would have either known other soldiers who had gone on this long journey with Paul, and by the end of the journey, I think most certainly become believers. And uh, I would assume probably that this soldier who dwells with Paul was a believer as well. And so I think here we have Paul with a companion who is not his uh, <coughs> his a jail keeper, but is his protector. And so this is the way that God works. And you say, Pastor, I think you read too much in the text. Well, you tell me why that's not there. You look at it and you study it. Paul kept his own house. He paid, he paid rent, paid for his own place, and a soldier kept him. And so literally he's got a man who is a soldier of Rome serving him. What a, what a wonderful kind of a situation. Well, when Paul gets to Rome, he realizes, I, I can't be resting on my laurels here. I'm not here on a picnic. I'm here as a, as a uh, servant and as a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I've got some things that I've got to do. And so immediately the Bible says after three days. And so here he is for three days, probably getting his household set up, probably either leading this soldier to Christ, or if, if he was already saved, probably teaching and instructing him. And so it says, when, after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were uh, come together, uh, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our father, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hand of the Romans, who when they had examined me would have let me go, uh, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I, constrained, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had to accuse my nation of. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. He said, I appealed to Caesar not because I was accusing the Jews or you of anything. But when the Jews spake, or in verse 20, For this cause therefore have I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. Now there's a couple of things I want to look at in this statement that Paul has made to his brother. First thing I want to do is look at the political setting that was going on. Now this is just about five years before Claudius declared, the, the, or before the Edict of Claudius, which declared that all Jews had to leave Rome. And so all Jews uh, were, were not permitted uh, to be in Rome uh, shortly from this time. And so the reason I point that out would be this. Paul had a better status where he was than his kinsmen according to the flesh. And I think it's wonderful on the providential hand of God Almighty on the behalf of these men who were the uh, men of Israel that God allowed them to be in the kind of situation where Paul could not take his soldier and go to the synagogue and meet with them. Now, I've heard it preached and taught many times that the reason that Paul didn't go to the synagogue was that he was on house arrest. That's possible. But uh, if you study history a little bit, you'll see that the Jews at that time weren't permitted to have a synagogue. They weren't permitted to have a place of worship. 
And so God has prepared the environment. He has prepared the circumstances for these individuals not uh, to be definitely out of their comfort zone where they are not the ones that are in their territory or their area able to stir up any kind of unrest. Matter of fact, they're in danger just because of their ethnicity themselves. And so I believe that God providentially prepared these men uh, to go to Rome and to be in a place where they could hear the gospel preached so that they could receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. And I don't uh, for a second doubt that at all. And so here Paul is in Rome, and he's called together the Jews, and he states to them his case. He says to them, I am a kinsman of you. I'm a Jew. He's not identifying with himself as a Roman. He's identifying with himself as a Jew. Now, obviously, from his dwelling place and the situation that he's in, he even has some privileges. Though he is, a, is going to be tried by Caesar, he has some privileges that they don't have because of his citizenship. And so when they come to him, he's in a better, stronger position than they are politically and physically. They're in greater danger because they don't have the rights of a Roman citizen. Now, keep this in mind. What was the Roman law regarding non-citizens? Uh, with and specifically, especially with regard to the Jews. Remember, they asked Jesus, or, or that Jesus emphasized this. What was the Roman uh, law that the Jews would have been well aware of with regard to soldiers? If he compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Roman soldiers had the right to demand uh, you, any, any uh, Jew or any non-citizen to carry his pack for a mile. And he could just, they could be on their way to the market or doing whatever, going about their business, doing whatever they're doing. And that Roman soldier had the right to take them and to compel them to carry a burden for him. And they had no right to resist. They could be arrested if they resisted. They didn't have any rights. They didn't have the rights. They weren't equals. They weren't treated that well. And here they come into a house where Paul is being kept with a Roman soldier. And so, uh, this certainly was not a place of strength for them. It's actually a place of weakness, as you can see. So the Jews aren't coming into Paul and saying, Ha ha, Paul, look where you're at. <laughs> you're under house arrest. And look where we're at. We're free. No, Paul actually was more free than they were because of his rights as a Roman citizen. Now, he says to them, he said, The reason I've called you. He says, I've called you because for the hope of Israel, I'm bound with this chain. And Paul just gets right down to the point. He says, there's one reason that I'm here, and it's because of the hope of Israel. Well, what is the hope of Israel? Brother Sammy uh, passes out Bibles and uh, gospel literature with the title or the phrase, the hope of Israel, on it. And if you study the Bible, the hope of Israel is Jesus. It is, Jesus is the hope of Israel. And so Paul is saying to these individuals that because of the hope of Israel, I'm bound with this chain. They were bound with the chain lacking the hope of Israel. These Jews were bound with a chain, and I'm not talking about a physical chain, I'm talking about a figurative chain. Uh, they were despised, they were ill-treated, though they would have been at Rome probably because of business and probably would have uh, very likely have been there because of uh, their merchants or were, would have been fairly wealthy or independent individuals, yet they had no rights and immediately could be mistreated, and we see under the Roman Empire that they were indeed uh, shortly thereafter. And so here Paul is with the opportunity to preach to individuals who are looking for hope about the hope. And what's their response? Well, here we find a different response than what we see much of the time from God's people, the Jews. And I think that it, probably much of it is because of circumstances. And I don't want to make too much of that because I think that the circumstances as a whole were the reason these individuals were receptive to the gospel. I think that their political situation, their, their lack of being in a comfort zone in Rome, uh, opened them up to see that they themselves were needy of the same hope of Israel that Paul had. So we continue. And they said unto him in verse 21, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came, showed, or spake any harm of thee. So they said, other brethren from Israel, from, from Jerusalem, have come here, and they haven't said anything bad about you, and we haven't gotten any, any official letters about how we're supposed to receive you. So they said, we don't really know what you're talking about. But look at verse 22. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. 
So they said, we know what you're talking about when you refer to the hope of Israel. And what they mean is, well, you're talking about Jesus and we know it. But these individuals said, 